says with Ngozi Atiti. Today we have yet another interesting topic to discuss and that is the power of unity. We're going to define what unity is. Of course we'll find out what the Bible says about unity, the benefits of unity. What is unity? We're going to keep the definition of unity very simple. Unity is a state of oneness or being joined together to achieve a common goal. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10, it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Does this agree with our initial definition of unity? Unity says it is a state of oneness or being joined together to achieve a common goal. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. So the speaking of the same thing is the power of unity being applied here. And that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together. Yes, it does agree with our definition. It, talk, it talks about joining together in the same mind. That means there is a common goal and in the same judgment, common vision. Let us go to Matthew 18 verse 19. I'll read from here. Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. There is another power of unity being applied here. Now, the Bible is talking about two people agreeing on earth, power of unity, touching one thing, a common goal, and that they are going to achieve their goal. Why didn't the Bible say one person who is a powerful prayer warrior? That means the Bible recognizes the power in unity. It says two. At least there has to be two different minds fusing together, applying the power of unity, uh, you know, pursuing a common goal. And it says here, it shall be done for them. That means they shall achieve their productivity. Take another passage in the Bible that talks about unity. Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 to 9. This is the story of the Tower of Babel. We're going to use it as a case study for today's teaching, basically. It says, Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shina, and they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and make them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had suffered for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do now. Nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and dear confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Okay, so let's make some biblical analysis of those verses we just read. Genesis 11 verse 1 to 9. And try to bring out the power of unity that was used in this passage. 
So the very first verse tells us that the whole earth had one language and one speech. This signifies that they had a common understanding. So if they could have one language, that means they understood themselves. And that was why they moved further to setting a goal for themselves. And that is the building of the tower. Verse 3 now says, they said to one another, because they could understand, now they now started setting up uh, a goal towards their, um, their project. They said, come, let us make bricks. Now, the use of a pronoun was used, let us, which tells us that one person was not involved in this. Two or more people were involved who agreed, having one set goal, to come together to achieve um, what they have set for themselves. Verse 4 now says, And they said, Come, let us, another use of a pronoun, signifying two or more people were involved. Then verse 5 now says, But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. In spite of the power of unity that was applied in this passage by the sons of men towards the building of the Tower of Babel, my question and my ask here is, why did heaven stop this project? The first one is, there was a selfish reason surrounding this project. Verse 4 says, And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heaven. It continues, it said, Let us make a name for ourselves. Um, Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. They were thinking of themselves. They were not actually thinking, is God behind this project? My second thought and the second reason why the project of the Tower of Baba was stopped by heaven was that it was against the will of God. God's purpose was that mankind should form many nations and people in all lands. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 says, And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. How will they subdue the earth if they decide to cluster together in one tower that, is, that has its foundation on earth and its rooftop in heaven? They won't be able to subdue the earth. They will not be able to rule over and have dominion over the fishes of the sea and over the birds of the air. So this project, the reasons behind this project was entirely against the will of God. And that was why um, God and his creative agents had to withdraw the power of unity. Let's take a look at the benefits of unity. Unity is for our personal benefit. Unity shines Christ's love into the world. The light of unity is so powerful that it can illuminate the whole world. Unity brings about high productivity. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30. I'm reading the A part of that verse. It says, how could one man chase a thousand or two put ten thousand to flight? This simply means that when we're united, our productivity level is ten times Unity Hi. brings about answers to prayer. Matthew 18, 19. It says it will be done for them. That means when we come together in one accord and pray as touching one thing, that God in heaven will answer our prayers. Unity brings about God's presence. Matthew 18, verse 20. It says, For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Unity is strength and power. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12. I'm reading the B part of that verse. It says, a threefold cord cannot be easily broken. How? I'll try to illustrate something here. 
Now, this is a single chord. Now, this signifies an individual. Now, if I try, if I put pressure on this chord, I might probably succeed in breaking it, which I, I did. Now, but if this chord, if they are together, a threefold chord, if together here, I have three of them here. If I try to break it, it's going to be really, really hard. And if I try uh, even harder, I'm going to hurt my fingers. Meaning that when we come together in unity, we cannot, you know, what we hurt or break one person, three or four will share it. Three or more of us will share in that pain and then we'll be able to get over whatever challenge that is, um, that is in that present situation. Still also illustrating here or telling us that the power of unity can never be overemphasized. Unity makes us much more effective. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. When they become one flesh, procreation starts. That is where the miracle of multiplicity, miracle of procreation. It starts by a male and a female coming together in unity, as the Bible explains there. Unity also brings about blessings. There are so many benefits of unity. And from this channel, we're saying apply the power of unity in your everyday activity. Hello viewers, I hope you enjoyed that topic, the power of unity. If you are in the city of Edmonton in Canada, and you're looking for a place of worship, I would like to introduce Mountain of Victory International Ministries to you. See you in the next video. Stay united. Don't forget to apply the power of unity in all you do, in your church, in your marriage, in school, at work, anywhere. Always remember that the power of unity is the bomb. That is stay what blessed and see you some other time. Shalom.